Hive forms are incredibly useful for standardizing the capture of information for requests that your team might be working on. You can set them up to create a new project in Hive or as a means to create tickets in an existing project. You can use these forms to capture information internally with other Hive users or to gather data from non-Hive users. In this video, we'll walk through how to create a new form, an overview of the various field types, as well as how to set these forms up to map to either a new project or to a new action card. To begin, you'll want to go to the Apps option in the left-hand nav panel. If the Forms app is not already toggled on, you can ask your Workspace admin to do this for you. If you're using Forms frequently, you can pin the application to the left-hand nav panel so that it's easily accessible from wherever you are in the app. In this example, we'll create a new form to capture Creative Services requests. Once you've created a new form, you'll start by giving the form a title. You can also add an optional description so that the users who are submitting this form have an idea of what the form is intended for, as well as any information around uh, SLAs for delivery of the request. Below, you'll see the toolbox. This is where you can find all the different options for form fields that you might add to the form body. On the right, we have the form body, where you can click and drag any of those fields to start to build out your form. Down at the very bottom, you have all of your options for submission. So if you'd like to provide a confirmation message to your form submitters, you can update that here. And then you can also choose how you'd like your form to be routed within Hive. For this example, we'll be creating action cards within an existing project. So I'll select this first option here. And next, I'll want to pick the project uh, that I want this form to create action cards within. So in this case, we'll choose the content production project. You have options to automatically assign any form submissions to a specific set of individuals, or you can choose an action template that will automatically apply a predetermined set of steps within Hive. If you're choosing to create a new project upon form submission, you'll select the second option. And from there, you choose the members of the project that you'd like to automatically be added upon the form submission. Just like the first option, you can also select a project template if you'd like to automatically apply that upon the submission of the form. Finally, at the bottom, you have a couple of options for notifying uh, both the recipients of the form as well as the submitters of the request. If you'd like to receive an email in addition to a Hive notification, uh, if you're an assignee, you can select this option. And from there, you'll just enter in the email addresses of any of the folks you'd like to receive that copy of the form submission. You have an option to also submit an email with a copy of the form to the form submitter. And then the final option is if you'd like to restrict the form submission to users within your Hive workspace. So that will require a Hive sign-in for them to be able to actually submit the form. Uh, so if you are looking to gather information from non-Hive users, you want to be sure to leave this option blank. From here, you can start to build out the actual body of the form. To do so, simply click and drag any of the field types from the toolbox into the body of the form. Every form field type can be edited once it's added to the body of the form itself. To do so, hover over the field, 
you'll see an edit button appear. Now each field type is going to have a slightly different set of options once you open up that edit modal. Each of those will have a title, so be sure to give a descriptive title for any of the form fields that you're adding. Each of the fields will also have some basic options, like whether or not they're visible, required, or read-only to the viewer. Input placeholder gives you a space to put an example of what kind of responses you might be looking for within the field. And then helper text can be great to give some additional context to any of the submitters of the form. So this is where you should put any sort of instructions around how to complete the form. Below we have all of the options for mapping. So depending on how you set up the form, um, so those are some of the options that we just looked at down at the bottom of the form editor. Um, you might be having this form submission create an action card, in which case you'll want to pay attention to all of the action mapping options. Now, if you're having this form create a project in Hive, you'll pay attention to any of the mapping options that have project in the description. The default will generally be to map to the action description. So if you create a form without editing any of the mapping options, all of the form content will go directly to the action card description. Now you have some additional options of being able to map to an action title or an action custom field. And generally, uh, you know, when deciding where to map specific fields, you'll want to think about a couple of things. So action description is going to be the best place for anything that's a little bit wordier um, or you might have a, you know, a long response from the form submitter. Action title is going to be helpful if this is something that you need to be able to search on. In this example here, I've made the form field uh, be the, the name of the request. So I definitely will want to be able to search on the name of this request. So in this case, I'd probably change the mapping from the action description to the action title, just so I can search for that card without having to open up the action card itself to see what this request is about. I'll choose the map to action custom field option if this is something that I need to be able to sort on in the table view. Uh, so if you switch your project to a table view, you can of course include any of the action custom fields, you can sort on them and you can filter on them. So that type of mapping might be helpful for a field that might be, you know, the category of the request or priority level, things like that. Now, depending on the type of field that you've selected from that toolbox on the left hand side, you might have some additional mapping options. So those might include a date field. If you have a date field on the form, you can map that to the due date of an action card. And if you choose any of the dynamic field types, which you can see in the background on the left, so dynamic users, projects, or labels, these will give you some additional mapping options. And we'll talk about those in a little bit. Once you've selected the appropriate mapping, you can scroll down to the bottom uh, where you'll see a couple more options. So logic is going to be where you create any sort of conditional logic within the form. So this might be, you know, making a certain question appear if you choose a specific answer in another field. You also have some layout options, and this is where you can choose if you'd like items to start in the same line, if you'd like to hide the field number, or if you'd like to change the title location. The final option for data is going to give you uh, a couple of different options around restricting values for the answers in this field. In most cases, you're just going to want to be concerned with the mapping of that field type. For any of the field types that have choices, so that might be a radio group or a checkbox, you'll want to open those up so you can edit the choices within the field editor. 
uh, here in the choices section, you can enter in the values for a question. Um, in this case, we can see in the traditional form entry page, you're able to add both a value and a text. So what that means is value is what is going to actually be the output of the form and text is what is going to display to the person who's filling out the form. So as an example, if you might use different codes or things like that to identify different types of requests, you would put the text as something that's going to make sense to the form submitter. So that might be a video request. Then as the value, say you use the code of V to indicate a video request in the back end, you would enter value as V. In most instances, you'll just use the fast entry and uh, you can just copy and paste directly from an Excel document. You don't necessarily have to have a different text and value option. You can really um, just enter in whatever you'd like the choices to present as. You'll also have a couple additional options around those choices. So how you'd like them to sort, uh, if there's a select all option, um, and then if there is an other or a none option for that field. So all of these field types up at the top are what you'd consider a pretty standard form field type. There are a couple of options that are pretty hive specific. So you'll see dynamic users, projects, and labels. And what this is going to do is it's going to pull up a list of uh, parameters from your hive instance. If you choose dynamic users, your form submitter would be able to select from a list of users in your hive workspace. Same goes for projects and then labels. Now these field types do have a couple of additional mapping options. So in the instance of dynamic users, you can map that user that's selected to the assignee on the action card. With dynamic projects, you can map that action card uh, to a specific project instead of just having it go to the default selection that you've added at the bottom here. And then with dynamic labels, you can have any label selected from the dropdown in the form have that map right to the labels on the action card. So these can be really useful if you know that your form submitter knows who might be assigned to an action card, uh, what project this action card or request should be associated with. Uh, and then if you'd like any sort of uh, selections from the form to map to the labels so that you can easily then filter your requests or view them in a nice label view within a project plan. Once you've added in all of your form fields, you can go ahead and save that form and it'll be added to the list of Hive forms in your workspace. From the Forms home page, you can see who this form was created by, when it was created, as well as the number of submissions. So if I need to go see any of the past submissions for a form, I can of course see them in the project they've been submitted to, but I can also come to this home page, click on the form stats, and from here, I can see all the details of any submissions of that form. So I can also click right into the action card from this page as well. When it comes to sharing your form, you have the option to copy the form URL. So this is if you're sharing this externally, if you have folks, you know, maybe clients or teams who aren't in Hive submitting the form, you can copy that URL and it is a static link. So as you make changes to that form, that URL will stay the same. You can also come back here to copy the form, uh, to edit the form or delete it if you need to. And then final option here is to pin any of your most important requests. And that's just gonna make it really easily accessible from within the Hive app. If any of your teammates go to the new button, they'll see that pin form right under request form here. 
So very easy for them to access that form and submit it if they're using it pretty frequently. Now, if I go in to actually submit an example form, Once that form submitter enters in all the information requested in the form, they can click Submit. And if they are a Hive user and they have access to the project that this form is adding any of the action cards to, they can view the request right from this form submission page. Now, if they're not a Hive user, they're not going to see that option. Uh, and then if they're not added to the project, uh, they would not be able to click that link and access the action card that's been created as well. So if I start with the title, I can see a couple of things that are routing directly from the form. Uh, graphics request for new website is uh, one of the form fields that I'd entered. So I had set this up to map directly to the title, and that's why I'm seeing this here, so very easily searchable. It's also pulling in the name of the form as well as the name of the submitter, date and time of submission. So there are uh, some options within the form editor to remove this if it's redundant. Down below, I can see that uh, radio button field uh, is pulling the type of request to the description. And I also set this up to map to a custom field, so I can see that down below. You also notice that there are a couple of sub actions that are being pulled in automatically, as well as an assignee to the action card. So these are all things that can be set up uh, so that once your form is actually submitted, it's very clear what the next steps are to be taken. And then, of course, the assignee would also be notified that there's a new job ready to begin.